Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parivraja Kacharya Sutara Satyashi Shri Mahad His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Nanta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Bregn Shigaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Na Shaimukun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Shri Mayapur Navadweep Dham Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Jagannath Swami Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glories, all glories to Shri Shri Guru Goranga, Shri Prabhupada, Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Namo. All glories to Bhakti. Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vishnu Bhaktivedanta Swami Jnana. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Devi Shesha Shunyavadi Pascharini Shri Jai. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Devi Shesha Shunyavadi Pascharini Shri Jai. Hare Krishna. So, here we are in Mother Swati's magnificent palace <laughs> in New Jersey. And uh, very happy to present another evening darshan for the transcendental sound vibration. So this transcendental sound vibration is very, very pleasing to the heart. There's a nice verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, 325.25, that the message of Godhead and the narration of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord is very pleasing to the mind and the heart when it is heard in the association of devotees. Uh, this, this, by hearing this transcendental sound vibration, one can attain all of the benefits of the Vedic culture, Vedas, Puranas, and uh, all the Vedic literatures, uh, even up to Vedanta and everything, simply by hearing narrations of the pastimes of Krishna. Just like if you come home and there's a message on your answering machine, and it's from somebody that you love, then you feel very happy, you feel very glad. Uh, in the same way, uh, when we hear a message from Krishna, and Krishna is the original beloved, uh, our relationship with Krishna is beginningless and endless. In other words, it's eternal. So before any of the relationships that we have in this material world, we have a relationship with Krishna. And after all these relationships are finished, then we all still have a relation with Krishna. Uh, so this is the real meaning of Krishna consciousness. Uh, it's not just a religion. It's not just a philosophy. It's not just uh, a cult or a, uh, a civilization, some ancient civilization. Huh? It's actually the way that we meet our real beloved, our eternal lover, Krishna. We can have relationships in this material world, but those relationships are always imperfect. They always leave something unsatisfied. Uh, they don't really give us what we're looking for, the satisfaction of the soul. But this relationship with Krishna actually does. It actually gives us the full nectar of transcendental bliss for which we're always hankering and the reason that people are suffering so much in this material world is they don't have that. They don't have that relationship. And they're looking, looking everywhere, here and there, uh, trying this and trying that, trying so hard. All the while they're in denial. They're thinking, 
yes, I can somehow or other arrange this material world so I can get happiness, I can get satisfaction. Uh, but it never really arrives. And of course, the very people who most need to hear this message won't hear it. They'll go away. Or they'll go into denial. They'll try to make believe it's not true. Uh, how can you have a relationship with God? You can't, we can't even see God. Uh, we don't know anything about God. It's just somebody writing in a book some speculation. Uh, they think like that. They try to make this absolute knowledge relative. Because that's all they know is relative knowledge. They're in this material world, in material consciousness. And they're seeing so many material objects. And they're thinking God is like that. Well, no, God is not like that. <laughs> First of all, God is not material. God is pure consciousness, pure cognition, pure ecstasy, pure love. See, the, what's the meaning of God if God is defined in relation to this material world? Uh, then there's no meaning to God. Uh, because God has to be beyond this material world, or how could he create the material world? See? The scientists say, oh, there was a big bang, and that had created everything. But if there was a big bang, then who lit the fuse? Huh? Who made the initial conditions necessary for that big bang? Well, before there was the big bang, there was the big crunch. And everything got squished together, and then in the Big Bang, it blows up again. Well, that's a nice theory, but you can't prove it. And like so many of the theories of the scientists, there's really no proof. But we have a proof for our theory. The proof is very simple. You have to do the process yourself. If you do the process, you will get the result. I can say, I can sit here all day and say, well, I did it and I got the result. But unless you try it, you're not going to really know. The reason is that each of us has individual consciousness, separate awareness, separate individual existence. So my consciousness is not connected to your consciousness. You can't know what's going on in my consciousness. See. I could be in a completely different state of consciousness, and you would have no way of knowing that. You have to do the, the process to change your consciousness, and then you can know it. That's the only way. Uh, there's no uh, so-called objective way, because consciousness is not objective, it's subjective. It means my consciousness is different from your consciousness. So when you change your consciousness, then you'll know then you'll have the experience yourself. This is yoga. This is the real meaning of yoga. Huh? Yoga means to link up, to connect, to have a relationship. See? So when we are in yoga with Krishna, through chanting of his holy name, then we can feel all these things. We can experience all these things directly. There's no need for speculation, for imagination, for uh, any guesswork whatsoever. Uh, this is the real process of transcendental life. So we're offering everyone this knowledge. Uh, we want to give everyone the uh, highest transcendental bliss, which comes from loving God. Uh, when you love an ordinary 